Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I come up with ideas of things that I want to have done at my home and I figure out a solution and I'm here to show you how I did those things in case you yourself want to do something very similar. Today we're going to be talking about adding a power outlet where there is not one. I want to add one to my pantry and as long as there is a switch, you can add an outlet. So I'm going to add an outlet down here. The reason why is I want to keep a vacuum in my pantry. Around the kitchen, sometimes we have crumbs or things we want to vacuum up really quick. And instead of bringing out the Dyson, hooking up all of the attachments, and then holding it up over my head because this thing is too long, just to get this every time I want to suck up some crumbs, what I have is a rechargeable vacuum. This I got off of Amazon, and I'll provide the link. But I want to keep this in my pantry, so when I want to suck up some crumbs like this really quickly, without having to haul out the Dyson, I can just grab my handy-dandy vacuum and get those crumbs right away. So that's the reason behind me wanting to add an outlet to my pantry. I've decided that rather than putting the plug way up the top, I want to have the vacuum accessible that I can just grab right about here. So I'm going to go ahead and add an outlet down here, which that vacuum can plug into so that it can always be recharging. Now, in my situation, usually the outlet that's existing is next to a stud, which is about right here. And you can tell in my pantry, there's some um, holes here from the nail gun. So this has been shot into the stud that's right there. And over here, of course, you want to use a stud finder to make sure there's no studs, but this is an empty hole right here in my pantry. So I'm going to cut out a hole for my junction box to sit, and then I will run a wire down and connect them together. Let's talk about what you need for this project. So now that we know what our project is, adding a new outlet, here are the things that we're going to need. We're going to need what's called fish tape, and this helps us run the wire down the, from the outlet down to where, or down from the switch down to the outlet. We're gonna need a new outlet. In this case, I'm using a GFCI rated outlet since it's in the pantry and in the kitchen. And then I need a junction box for my new switch. And these kind you can pick up at Lowe's or Home Depot, but they have this nice little tab. So when you tighten the screw, the tab holds it nice and flush with the sheetrock of the wall. So you don't have to open up your wall and nail this box into a stud. It will just hang right onto the um, drywall. I've used those in previous videos, so you might be familiar with those. I'll need the faceplate for the outlet, of course, and some wire strippers. And then finally, some wire nuts to wire the, tighten all the nuts together. The very first thing I'm going to do is cut a hole for my junction box. Now, around my kitchen, the other outlets are about a foot off the ground. So I'm going to mark that bottom point right there. Now, since this is in the pantry, I don't really need it to be pretty. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop the box just right here in the middle. Of course, flipping the box around so I can draw and trace around my hole. That's about a foot. So I'm not drawing on top of these tabs because that's what's going to hold to the drywall. I'm just getting this bottom section to know where my square needs to be. Now I'm just going to take a ruler and make this a nice square. Now as far as cutting out the drywall, I'm just going to use a box cutter. If you have a drywall cutting knife, awesome, but this is the tool that I'm going to use. There we go, I got my hole cut out. I'm just going to now measure to make sure that my junction box will fit.
pretty tight fit, but that'll do. Now that my hole's cut, I'm going to now go and turn the power off, take the faceplate of this out to expose the switch, and then we'll talk about the wires. You'll want to locate your fuse box, locate the correct fuse, and make sure you turn that off. 24. Now before I talk about wiring, I wanted to point out these little pieces of the junction box. We're gonna open those up and run our wire from here down to the hole that we cut in this drywall using our fish tape. So I'm just gonna use a flathead screwdriver to start prying these open to expose the hole to drop our wire. Now at this point, we would hook our wire to the fish tape and tape it together using something like electrical tape. Painter's tape will just come off, so do something a little bit stronger. But in this case, I don't have very far to go, and it's just straight down. So I'm just gonna push the wire right through the hole. And there we have it. I've ran the wire down, and it's coming out the junction box hole at the bottom. Next, I'm gonna wire up the switch down here before I wire it up here. But when I do so, I wanna cut just a little bit of length to spread the wires, um, about probably three or four inches, and then I will have enough to go right into the box. Now before I wire the outlet, I need to make sure this wire goes through my junction box. So I'm doing the wiring on the other side of the box. Now that I have the wire run through the box, I'm just gonna go ahead and attach this junction box to the drywall by fastening these screws which will open up the tabs and hold onto the drywall. Next, I'm gonna take a box cutter or a razor blade and cut the sheathing off to expose the wires so I can manipulate them better. Next, take some wire cutters to expose the wire underneath this black and the white, or the common, and the ground's already exposed. Now we're gonna use some pliers to make some little loops out of the wire so that they can connect onto the junction box. There's some debate I've seen about just going straight into the back um, without curling it around the nut or the screw, but that that can sometimes be faulty and cause wiring problems. And so to be more secure, I'm going to just fasten it around the screw here. So we are gonna add our black onto the gold side, our white or common onto the silver side, and then our ground here at the bottom. And I'm doing the bottom of the terminal. I want that to keep constant power to this without having to have the light switch on in order to provide power. Once this is all wired up, the next step is to just screw this all in and put the faceplate on. Okay, now that our outlet is all installed, we move back up to the light switch and our wire coming out of the box. We're gonna cut this wire about here and split the wires just like we did before. All right, so here are my wires from my power outlet, all stripped and ready to go. So we're going to, of course, attach the ground to the ground wire. We're gonna attach the common to all the other commons, which are right here. So we're just gonna add the white to this existing wire nut. And then the black will be a little bit different. The black, as far as the switch is concerned, this is the power coming in from the fuse box where this is the power going to the light switch that's in the pantry up here. So we don't wanna tie into this one, we wanna tie into this one. So what I'm gonna do is back this one out and then I'm gonna cut some black wire and we're gonna wire nut it all together. So I'm gonna take this wire right here, and I'm going to run it into a wire nut, and then two, or then this wire is gonna run into the wire nut, and then a separate wire is gonna run back out to come back into the fuse, or into the switch. So let's see if I can explain that as I go.
Okay, step one, all the whites are wire nutted together and I added some electrical tape just because there was a little bit of exposed wire on the one that I came in from the switch box I just installed. So they're all wire nutted together for the common white. Okay, for the ground, they were all twisted together using and connected using this little copper plate thing that was squished together. So I got a screwdriver and I pried it open so I can pull it out. I'm going to reuse this. I have some, but I can't seem to find them. But we're going to wire the other ground into this um, ground here, twist them together, and then put this copper piece back on and cinch them together. All right, so the ground from the switch or from the outlet comes up and I have it twisting around this coil. And I was able to loosen up this connector piece enough, I hope, to slide over the rest of them and then you clamp it down in piece so that all three wires are snug and secure. Okay, all grounds are twisted together and fastened together with that copper piece to hold them nice and firm together. All right, I went ahead and pushed the white back up out of the way. And now the last piece is the black. So again, we're coming off the hot from the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap this cable to about where this one meets. And then I'll go ahead and strip this off and then wire nut all three of these pieces together. All right, so this is the black coming from my new outlet. This is the black coming in from the power from the fuse box. And then this is the black going into the switch. I'm going to wire nut all three of these together. I pre-twisted them all together and I'm going to cut off the excess and that's just the one from my switch, or sorry, from my outlet. So I'm going to clean that up just so that they all wire nut together nice and tight. And there's not this extra extension pushing it off further. So now to wire nut. Sure, that's nice and tight in there. All right, just to recap again, power from the fuse box, new switch or new outlet we added, and then the power that goes into the light switch. So all we need to do now is put this all back together with the face plate and turn the power back on and see if we're good. Before I turn the power back on, I just wanted to reiterate the importance of knowing which black is from the fuse box power and which is going to the other exterior light fixture. In this case, you can use a multimeter to test these um, terminals to see which one has constant power. But if you tap into the wrong black, your light's only gonna, or your switch is only gonna turn on when the light's on. If you want it to be constant power, it has to be connected to the black wire that is from the fuse box that has constant power. It, just because mine was on the top doesn't mean that yours is on the top, vice versa. You have to check your individual switch. Okay, so I went down to the breaker and turned it back on. And so now we have power to the light fixture. And we also have power to our GFCI connector here. So this one, usually these turn green and I'm not sure if I've got a faulty switch or what, but you can tell for sure that if I plug in this plug for my new vacuum, it does turn on and it stays on even though the light is off. And if it's on, I still have charge on my vacuum. So for those of you that just wanted to see how to install an outlet off of this existing switch, we'll see you later. But if you wanted to continue and watch how I add this vacuum to the wall, then stay tuned. Now it's tight quarters in here for filming but my vacuum has a little mount that it came with to mount onto the wall. I just need to determine how high I want the vacuum to sit. I don't want it to be too close to the switch to get in the way, but I don't want it to be too low that it's out of the way of your reach. So if I can find my pencil, I'm gonna hold this up with the mount on it, with the vacuum on it, at a good height. I'll say right there's pretty good. I'm not worrying about it being center, I just want to mark my up and down. 
measurements there. So the vacuum comes with some hardware for wall mounting. Have these little plugs for the drywall. So we don't really need to anchor it to any kind of stud or anything like that. Just need to drill holes. And I chose a drill bit that's about the same width as the actual spacer itself, at least as far as the screw is concerned. And we've just drilled the holes and plugged them with these spacers or these plugs. Next is to use the provided screws to drill this into the wall. All right, now that the wall mount's installed, I use these little tacks that I had lying around to kind of keep the cord out of the way. And of course, the last step would be to mount the vacuum. There we go. Power. So you can still see that if I turn the light off to the pantry, the power stays on on the vacuum. So it's always ready to go. Speaking of ready to go, what better way to test out the vacuum in a storage situation than to clean up my mess? So I pull the vacuum off the wall. Turn it on. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit the subscribe button down below. And as always, if you didn't like this video, feel free to go make your own video.